replication, transcription, translation. Good, exactly. So our central dogma is going from DNA to RNA to protein, correct? Mm -hmm. So then when you are going to be talking about a typical scenario on your USMLE exam, let's go through this. So what is the likely diagnosis? That's the step. Let's paraphrase. So 27 year old male comes into the urgent clinic with a two week history of fever, rash, generalized lymphadenopathy. Anytime you see generalized lymphadenopathy with these yeah. symptoms, it's nonspecific. You're really worried about HIV or some sort of malignancy. Okay. Nice sore throat, genital ulcers, and urethral discharge. So in this scenario, you are saying that he doesn't have any active STI type of stuff. Exam shows wasting of muscles and a protuberant abdomen. So in this scenario, what you have to understand is that there is a cachexia. And remember that TNF alpha, for example, is going to give you that cachexia because it's a long-term thing. Sexual, sexual history, if you just sit there and read it, essentially he's high risk and he mm -hmm. was treated for gonorrhea. So what do you think is the most likely diagnosis here? Well, I guess HIV because we're talking about it, but. <laughs> exactly, right? So acute HIV and the cytokine for the wasting syndrome is TNF alpha. The thing that you just have to know, and you'll see this in your torch infection questions in a neonate, is that this generalized lymphadenopathy, some rash, some thrush, it won't fit into like, for example, your, your PDA and cataracts of rubella, right? Yeah. It's going to be these nonspecific symptoms and you always have to clue yourself in. So when you're going through HIV, the things that you have to understand is that you have GP120, GP41, et cetera, et cetera. And they want you to know what are these different surface antigens. So GP120 is a binder. It docks the actual HIV to what it attacks, which is CD4 positive T cells. So that GP120 is the docking. Now, with that docking, you also have co-receptors. And the USMLA likes to go for that because the co-receptors is that added detail. The right. two co-receptors you need to know, CCR5 and CXCR. Yeah. Okay. And the 5 was macrophage, right? Yep, exactly. Good. And, and the 5 has other things, like could be found on T cells, macrophages, a lot of antigen-presenting cells. CXCR4 is typically just on the T cells. Now, GP41, that's easy. GP41 is what? Interstitial. Fusion, right? Yeah. 41 fusion. Now, the nucleocapsid is made up of what protein? Um, glycoprotein. So uh -huh. the nucleocapsid, which is that outside area, is going to be made up of P24. So now you know that in your HIV knowledge armamentorium, you are going to integrate these different GPs because if they say, Oh, a science experiment. We want to make something that, uh, that is going to really look at the docking protein. You would say, oh, okay, they're trying to just test me, GP120. P24, which is going to be seen on the nucleocapsid, is actually really important for our antibody and sensitive screening test. And what you also have to recognize is that the regulatory gene needed for the progression from HIV to AIDS which is the terminal kind of progression, is going to be NEF. So mm -hmm. they can give you a scenario on your exam. They can say, hey, a patient has longstanding HIV, and he has probably a moderate viral load, but he keeps having HIV and never progresses to AIDS. Well, this is a great way for them to test you on something called a NEF mutation. Basically, they're integrating this whole process of like, oh, does the student know HIV goes to AIDS? And NEF is important for that. Well, if NEF is mutated, you cannot go from HIV to AIDS. Okay. So this is just kind of uh, showing us the uh, summary of many things. GP120 docking, GP41 fusion. You are going to have these guys, integrase, reverse transcriptase, protease. We're going to be talking about that in the next slide. And then the P24, which we talked about. Um, and that's what we use as our diagnosis tests. All right, so if you think about GP120, GP120 is going to bind to CD4, and then we said that we have these co-receptors, CXCR4 found on T cells, CCR5, five I mean is a bigger number, so a broader scope, T cells, macrophages, monocytes, dendritic cells, okay?
Now, as your HIV now goes in, remember it's a single-stranded RNA virus that then goes against our central dogma, i.e. it goes from a RNA to a DNA. And now that RNA to DNA, remember that's due to reverse transcriptase, and then subsequently, you are going to have integrase that integrates that viral DNA now into our host genome. So essentially, once it's integrated, thanks to integrase into our host genome, it is just like COVID, what they're saying right now, is that it takes over your cellular machinery. Well, <laughs> what does it do? Well, some of it makes its own viral proteins. The other stuff it does is it makes proteins for the immune um, uh, response. Either way, the cell is activated and infected. So this is a good slide just for you to recognize what's going on in the acute phase, which was what the vignette talked about, and then the chronic phase. Mm -hmm. So on the navy blue line, you see HIV that is in the blood. And then the green line is actually the number of T cells. You have a great immune system initially. And once the HIV comes in, the body says, whoa, what is this? And the T cells shut down. After a while, over the next few weeks, you are going to see, ah, T cells are going to be like, oh yeah, I know who you are. You're HIV. And so T cells are actually going to fight and cause you to have a low HIV in the blood. However, eventually you end up having the HIV overtake the T cells. And that's when you're going to be going through the HIV to AIDS process eventually. The point here for you to recognize is that you are going to have periods in HIV where yes, you might have a flu-like illness, but then you have a phase where you're feeling fine. And that feeling fine phase is when the T cells are overtaking your uh, HIV it's viral easy. load. Yep. So just to like kind of look at this. I hate just saying like, know this table. So what I do is I want you to know what are the pertinent ones you need to know for your exam. P24, we know that. Reverse transcriptase, okay, we know that. Integrase, all right, we know that. Protease, because we'll talk about the navirs, which are going to be protease inhibitors. GP120, which is docking. GP41, which is fusion. So the next step for us to recognize, once we talked about the protein uh, st uh, structure, is to understand what are the different genes that we can integrate. So say, for example, they want you to know uh, a scientist wants to be studying the nuclear capsid protein, P24. Which of the following genes does he need to actually isolate? And that's the GAG gene. If you're trying to look for a mutation in integrase, you need to look at the pole gene because pole is for polymerase. And if you're trying to look for the docking proteins and the fusion that helps after docking, it's the end gene. So again, you're trying to take details now and then put it back into the genes. This is another one, manipulates T cells required for the progression to AIDS. We talked about NEF. Remember that NEF also decreases MHC1 expression. And that's what tumor cells also do. Tumor cells, just like HIV, decrease MHC1. So if you decrease MHC1, antigens are not presented properly and the tumor or the HIV can wreak havoc. Go ahead and read this question and kind of figure out what I'm going for. There's a likely reason as to why he is chronically infected and not progressed to AIDS. All right. Um, So basically they're saying like, this dude has HIV or lady has HIV. Why is he not getting worse? Yep. And that would be then the NEF, the NEF gene. Exactly, good. In Remember case. NEF is needed to progression to AIDS, good. All right, so the test that we use for HIV is this FDA approved fourth generation antigen antibody test. I don't want you to yawn and say this is step two CK, but I just want you to know that we use an ELISA, i.e. looking at antibodies first, and then we do a Western blot protein confirmatory, but it is to the P24. Remember that when you have high sensitivity, high sensitivity just as a biostats tie-in, you have less false negatives. That means that if I get a very sensitive test, I'm gonna catch many people 
and it is going to be very unlikely to have somebody come out but, negative and that's incorrect. High specificity, you have low false positives because it's very specific. So when you're positive, that means that likely it's not false. Okay. The test that you have to know in infants born to HIV positive mothers is you look at the HIV viral load. This is going to have a great immunology tie-in because remember that there are antibodies, IgG antibodies, that can cross the placenta and cause false positives in babies. So in babies, you want to have that very specific test, which is the HIV viral load. So this is just for us to recognize that people who are going to progress to AIDS are going to have very recurrent infections. And these recurrent infections that they're going to test you on are things such as pneumocystis pneumonia, which they're mm -hmm. going to say silver stain, treat with Bactrim. Remember that if these patients are hypoxemic, it's usually due to the interstitial mm -hmm. infiltrates as a pulmonary tie-in. Remember that that causes you to have a diffusion defect. That's why we use steroids in patients who are hypoxemic. Fungal infections um, are also going to be key. Remember that you can get candidiasis of the esophagus and you know, other immunocompromised esophagitis, such as your CMV or HSV, and then Kaposi sarcoma, which is going to be HHV. Eight. Eight. You got it. Very good. So just to wrap up all of this, why I went through this life cycle is because we need to integrate the pharmacology, and that's going to be our final section here. And fuverotide inhibits fusion. And fuverotide inhibits fusion. That's pretty easy. C CCR5 inhibitor is Maraviroc. So the way that you can remember it is CCR5 looks like the actual um, vodka Ciroc, right? CCR5, if you just put everything around. So Maraviroc, Ciroc. Ah, CCR5. Okay. Reverse transcriptase inhibitors, you are going to inhibit me going from RNA to DNA. So that's going to be ethavirenz, tenofovir, lamivudine. Any ivudine, ivudine, just think about ivudines as your reverse transcriptase inhibitors. Raltegravir, gravir, inhibits integration. Gravir, gration. And then your Navier's is going to inhibit the proteolytic cleavage, which is your final step. Okay. Okay. So oh. in summary, what we just did was we went through the HIV life cycle. We went through the various proteins and the genes that are important. And then finally, we went through the actual pharmacology.